So I know I'm, I'm Rebecca Cooper. I'm the internship program specialist here at Cascadia. And I'm going to talk to you today about the informational interview. How many of you have heard about the informational interview? If I can see a show of hands. Oh, good. Good. It's nice to talk to groups where you know you don't know more than I do about this subject. Anyway, uh, basically the informational interview. The reason, let me tell you why I chose to talk about the informational interview today. Um, as you know, the job market right now is pretty tight. And not just for jobs, but for internships, it can be pretty difficult to find jobs because you are, along with you know the hundreds of other people who apply for jobs, come across employers' desks. And it's just so much for employers to go through. You know, it, it's, it's insurmountable in, in many instances. So what the informational interview does it, it enables people like yourselves to break through to what is called the hidden job market. I've heard, and, and this varies from 70 to 90 percent sometimes, but I've heard that most jobs are not advertised. Um, 70 to 90 percent of jobs are not advertised. So you have 10 to 20 percent of jobs that are advertised, and the rest is all found out by word of mouth. It's who you know. It's not what you know, it's who you know, the old adage. So the informational interview helps you break through that into that hidden job market and get in front of the hiring authorities. So instead of being one of hundreds of resumes that come across a hiring manager's desk, you're going to be able to get in front of them ahead of time. So when a position comes available, they think, you know what, I remember that person. They, they were articulate, they seem to have some good skills, um, they were eager to get to work, and they'll call you before they have to go through this you know, huge pile of other resumes. So uh, basically what an informational interview does, it's, a, it's more of a conversation. And the beauty of that is it takes away from the pressure and the stress of a regular job interview. I think we've all been through interviews before where you know, you're, you're very nervous. It's, it's natural to be nervous in an interview. Uh, you know, you're, you're applying for a job, you want that job very badly, and you know, you're on. You have you know, 20 minutes to sell yourself. So, the informational interview is more of a conversation, kind of just like what we're having right now. And please ask any questions as I go along. Um, I'm pretty informal. Um, so it's about the jobs that you can't see, and, and it really does help for people exploring careers or hoping to break through that in the job market that I've mentioned. Um, informational interviewing can also be as simple as striking up a conversation with friends, neighbors, or family. It doesn't have to be you know, where you contact the employer yourself, but it, it usually is. But you, I, I always encourage students as well as others who are looking for work to utilize everybody that you know. You know, talk to people on the elevator. Have an elevator speech ready to tell people that you, this is what I want to do. Um, tell your neighbors that you're looking, your friends, relatives. Um, because you never know who they'll, they'll know or what they'll come across. So the, the what and the why of informational interviewing um, you can learn more about the realities of working in a particular company. Say you've always wanted to work for you know, a certain company. You can get in front of those hiring managers and find, ask questions because you're not interviewing for a regular job. You can ask pretty much any, any questions you want about what it's like to work in a particular business or company. Um, it, it helps you to focus your career goals. If you have any question about what you're wanting to do, now would, that would be a good time to talk to, that's okay. <laughs> to talk to employers about, you know, what's it really like to work here? Do you like it? And I can go over some more questions um, that you can talk to employers about. You're also making important professional contacts. You're building that important network. And they also um, polish your communication skills. I know, I've been through informational interviews myself, and I honestly, I found three career-related jobs myself, this being one of them, through informational interviews. Um, and it, and it, 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 what I found that it really helped me do was it polished my communication skills. It made me start thinking about, you know, after I left that information interview, what would I ask at a job interview? What would I ask this person? It kind of really narrows your focus when it comes to asking or coming up with, with questions. And it also, you know, because it, it, if you're getting in front of some, a hiring authority and asking those questions, it also helps you gain confidence in talking with a professional manager. But you don't want to ask for a job when you're going for an informational interview. You always want to ask for advice, ideas, leads, and referrals. So you don't go and say, hey, I'm looking for a job today. Do you have anything? 
or I got, saw this position advertised, I want to apply for it. That's not the point of the informational interview. Just think of an informational interview as connecting with people and asking questions about what it's like to work there and making those important contacts. So you want to look for people actually working in the occupation you're considering and meet with the hiring authority. You, you probably don't want to meet with, although you can, you can meet with people who are working a lateral position as you, but it's probably better to work, start at the top and work your way down. I've even interviewed with vice presidents of companies and once they find out what I want to do, they'll, they'll direct me to whoever the hiring manager is. Another way you can uh, find out who the hiring manager is, is by making direct contact yourself. And there's three main ways of doing that. The first is the mutual acquaintance introduction, which I kind of just briefly went over. You know, letting people know your neighbors, your, your friends, your family, that's a mutual acquaintance introduction. And you can also introduce yourself over the phone or in a letter. Um, the letter introduction is probably the most common way, and I think it's the best way to introduce yourself. Um, some employers prefer receiving a letter or an email. And the reason being is instead of getting a cold call from someone, someone saying, hey, I'd like to set up a time where I can meet with you, they kind of have that time to read the letter or email, digest it, and think, you know, yeah, I can do this. It doesn't catch them off guard. You want to explain who you are and why you want to meet and how long you expect the meeting to take. And you also want to say what type of job or career you're seeking in general. So um, you also might want to mention how you found the person's name, if it's through a friend or an acquaintance or through an instructor, what have you, or even if you found it just from a Google search, you want to let them know how you found their name. And in the last part of that letter, you want to state that you'll be calling them in 48 hours. So in a couple, if you wait too long, that letter or email is going to kind of become stale. So you want to call them within 48 hours and, and arrange a meeting time. Um, if, if you call and you can't get in touch with them, you get their secretary or you get their, their voicemail, call again in another 24 hours. Kind of be persistent without being too intrusive. Um, sometimes you'll come across a, an admin assistant or a secretary who says, you know, they're, they're busy. You know, can I ask who's calling? And if you tell them your name, just say, you know, they're expecting my call. That's a truthful statement. If they've gotten the letter, you said you'll contact them in 48 hours. It's a truthful st statement that, you know, they are probably expecting your call. You can make a, t a cold call telephone introduction, but it is a little bit more stressful because at that moment, if, if you haven't sent them a letter, you're having to explain to the hiring manager who you are and why you're calling, and it's just a little more, it's a little less comfortable, I think, to do that. Um, so I suggest writing the letter first and then calling, and then calling again if necessary. So, if you write a letter, um, you just want to say, you know, dear so-and-so, dear hiring manager, put their name in that blank, and state that, you know, I'm a student, currently a student at Cascadia Community College, and this is what I'm studying. I'd like to take no more than 20 minutes of your time to talk with you in, in, about your career and any, you know, challenges and, and successes that you've had. I won't take any, up any more than 20 minutes of your time. It usually goes over an hour. Um, just to have a conversation. I'm not applying for a job, but I'd just like to find out more about this field. I'll be contacting you within 48 hours to set up a mutually convenient meeting time. I've only been turned down probably once or twice for informational interviews. People want to help, and because it's not an interview situation, it's more of a conversation. People like to talk about themselves too. So those two things combined, you know, you're, you're pretty sure to probably get into me with those, those people. So before the informational interview, you want to research the company so you can come up with, you know, look, you can appear at least um, to, that you've done your homework about the company, that you can ask intelligent questions about the company, and that you truly have an interest in the company you're talking about. You want to create a resume and bring that with you. And also, um, you want to develop a list of questions, and I printed some that I'll hand out to you um, about some questions you might want to take along. So you might want to ask questions like, what kind of tasks do you do on a typical day or in a typical week? How did you break into this career? I really like doing blank. Do you have an opportunity to do that type of work in this career? What characteristics does a person in this job need to have? So again, it's just, you know, it's an informational situation. At the end of the conversation, what you always want to do is, you know, 
of course, thank them for their time, and then ask them if they have a list of at least three different people that you could connect with, that you could contact, like you just did with this person, and if you could possibly use their name. And more often than not, yeah, they, they know three people in the industry that you can contact. And if you can use that person's name, that always helps for the next person that you're contacting is, is a, a mutual um, person, a mutual individual that, uh, that both of you know. So on the day of the informational interview, you want to, it's more casual than a regular job interview, but you want to dress well, you want to be professional, and be sure to take a, a notepad and paper and take notes. Say thank you at the end of it and report back to them, you know, you know within a month or two if you you're still looking for work, just to say, you know, I'm still looking for employment. Um, if, you know, maybe there's three other individuals you can give me the names of, I'd like to contact them. And then once you do land that job or the internship, let them know that you've been successful and how much help that they were during the entire process. So do, does anybody have any questions up to this point? Yes. As far as the informational questions go, during that conversation, are, are you, you suggest going with all open-ended questions or have a balance between open-ended and closed-ended or how do you? Yeah, um, you know, a balance is probably good. I and mean, what you'll find is you'll have this list of questions with you. Invariably, you're going to go off of that list because, again, it's just this conversation. But I think some of the more important questions, you know, is just, you know, how did you get into this, this, this profession? What do you like about working here? What don't you like about working here? Um, and what, what, if you can look at my resume and have any suggestions of, you know, what I should put on it or take out of it, um, and any suggestions from your standpoint, you know, things like that. But it's really a great opportunity to be talking with them and getting some professional advice from somebody who's in a position of hiring. Yeah, but open-ended and, and otherwise questions are fine. Anybody else? by Richard Bowles, B-O-L-L-E-S. And it's updated every year. And he, he, he's the individual who actually came up with the, the idea, sorry, um, came up with the idea of the informational interview. And I highly recommend it. It has great points that, uh, to, that he goes into that I may have not touched on in a little bit more detail. So, um, you can get that at, at most libraries. So any any other questions or well good. Well thank you for your time. I'm gonna introduce Shelly. When did you have I have one more question. Just yeah. what's the because I've been in that situation yet. Um, what's the standard for follow up? I mean, I know you mentioned the you know, call a couple months later. As far as saying thank you, I'm like, is there a is there a preferred like a handwritten thank you card or an email? Or what's the kind of the status quo? That's a good question. You know, and it can go either way. You know, I personally I like handwritten notes. I think it, it, it makes you stand out among the rest nowadays because nobody mm -hmm. writes handwritten notes. Right. Um, but emails are certainly fine, and it will get to them quicker, and you're going to be sure that they got that that message that you. Where sometimes you know the handwritten note, you just are never sure where it ends up. So you know that's your call in that case. So I like the personal approach of the handwritten, but I think an email is probably just as fine. And, and it's not. I mean, I think nowadays it's, it's almost expected to be written that way. Yeah. So, but then you know, then like I say, you know, send the thank you note, follow up in a month, and just say whether you're still looking. You know, that's great. If, you know, and once you land that position. Always keep in touch with the people that you're networking with. I had I, I made the mistake of um, this isn't too long ago either. I made the mistake of um, contacting an old boss of mine, and the only time I ever contacted her, and she was right, over the last ten years was probably to ask if she knew of anybody who was hiring. And she finally said, you know, I, every time I hear from her, it's only asking if you're looking for work. And so it's. Keep in contact just to say, hey, you know, here's an article I read that I thought you might be interested in, or just wanted to keep in touch and let you know what I'm still doing. You know, just kind of kind of keep that connection going. I think it's really important. Yeah, Shelley. Yeah, I, I would also say like adding that if they ever need anything from you, like that you're available, like that it can be a mutual thing because I kind of like what you just said, like sometimes they think, well, you're just contacting me to do something, mm -hmm. but you know, if you ever need a volunteer for something, Maybe you'll recall 
qualify for their positions that they may go for an intern or you know somebody that's more entry level and they know somebody that might be able to right yeah send them a lead well. yeah exactly and, and what I've also found that too with internships um, so the, this, these aren't just for jobs I mean I really I've, I have been finding that internships you know are diffi more difficult to find nowadays just because there's a lot of people applying for them this even if there's not an advertised position or internship you're getting in front of the people who can make that decision They're, they may not even have one but talking with you after talking with you and having a conversation and saying you know what we might be able to use somebody like this here or they might know somebody in their network that they can call up so there may not be anything existing when you talk with them but certainly that can be created so i highly, i highly recommend it i see it's worked for me personally and i've seen it work for a lot of people As far as the dress code goes, because it's an informational interview, is there a, is it more of a business casual situation, or should you, you know, you know for a guy dressed with a tie and maybe a jacket, or is yeah. that maybe overdoing it? I mean, what do you, what, I mean, it's because it's a little different than a regular job interview. Yeah, and it you know really depends what kind of company that you're going to talk with. Um, if it if if it's you know in, in most IT related businesses nowadays, it is business casual. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think for a gentleman, you know, nice khaki slacks and a nice shirt would be fine. I think it might be overdoing it if you okay. dress with the tie. You know, if you were going to talk to a banker, you know, or talking to the CEO of a company, maybe even with for an IT company, I may wear the suit and tie. Okay. But um, yeah, it's a little bit more business casual in, in this situation. Yeah. It's always hurt, it's always better to overdress than underdress. And you're absolutely right, yeah. 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 If you just don't know, you know, but you can also call the front desk and ask them. Sure. You know, what's it, I'm coming for an interview. What's it, what's it like there to dress? I, I know someone who started their first day of work at a business casual and hat and asked, and he had to get through the next, the first day, and 